G'day there and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. Today we're talking vehicle speed sensors. A vehicle speed sensor's job is relatively simple. It measures the speed of a rotating shaft and sends that information to the engine management system for processing. But before we get to that, we need to know what kind of sensor to use and where they can be located. The most common place to find a factory vehicle speed sensor is on the gearbox where there's normally a sensor detecting the speed of the output shaft which is directly related to road speed. If there's no sensor on the gearbox, odds are there'll be a sensor looking at a number of teeth around a single wheel hub or even a sensor mounted on each of the four wheel hubs. This would suggest that cars fitted with ABS. These are the sensors that are used to detect if a wheel's locked up under braking or not. Firstly, we need to find the sensor. Then. Determine what kind of sensor you have. It'll either be Hall Effect Digital, uh, Interrupt Style Digital, Magnetic Inductive, which is passive, or Magneto Resistive Active. Yeah, there's plenty of different styles and different wiring techniques depending on the sensor. If you're lucky enough to find a Hall Effect or Interrupt Style sensor on the gearbox, then things are pretty straightforward. Just share the factory signal with a digital input wire on your ECU, and that's it. If your car is fitted with ABS that, that you're still using uh, and it uses a magnetic inductive or magneto resistive style sensor, then things get a little trickier to the point where it might just be easier to fit a speed sensor of your own. There's an art to sharing ABS sensors, especially magneto resistive style sensors, which require extra electrical circuits to isolate the aftermarket ECU and the ABS computer so one doesn't upset the other. But fitting a sensor of your own isn't as daunting as it sounds. You'd use a Hall Effect sensor, just like the ones we use for crank sensors, and make a mount so the sensor detects something like the heads of wheel studs on, on the back of the wheel hub assembly, the, the bolts holding a front CV together, or, or the bolts of a tail shaft. When fitting the sensor, remember to have a think about which wheel it's fitted to. The driven wheel, so a wheel that'll show wheel spin, or the undriven wheel, a wheel that'll show actual road speed. Typically, it's best to measure a driven wheel first, then add a second sensor to an undriven wheel. That way, you can determine a slip percentage between wheels and build a traction control strategy if you'd like to. If all this sounds a little too complicated, keep in mind you can fit a GPS speed module. This is a little module that has a GPS antenna and a speed signal output. It's connected to the ECU as if it was a non-driven wheel speed sensor. After you have your sensors fitted and wired to the ECU, we just need to calibrate the number of pulses to the speed the vehicle's traveling. This is a really simple process where we drive at a known speed, so on the dyno or using a GPS speed app on your phone. Then let the ECU know this speed and press the calibrate button. And that's it. The ECU then determines how many pulses it receives at the known speed and can therefore determine road speed all the time. This takes gearbox ratios, diff ratios, and rolling diameters into account so all the hard work's done. You don't need to do any maths. Once you have a road speed input into the ECU, you can then send that speed information out to a digital dash. You can set up speed limits like valet mode or pit lane mode, set up anti-stall idle control strategies so the engine comes back to idle nice and smooth depending on road speed. You could uh, set up boost control strategies based on road speed. And of course, as I mentioned before, you could set up traction control strategies based on the difference between each of the wheel speed inputs. Now, while your ECU doesn't need a wheel speed input to operate, it's certainly a really nice thing to have. My name's Scott, and I'll see you next week.